This is a lesson on equivalent fractions. So, um, equivalent fractions is just another way of saying um, fractions that mean the same amount but have different numbers. So, here's a visual example right here. So, we have this circle and half of it is filled with color and half is white. So, that we have two um, halves, one here and one here and one of them is colored, so we would have one out of two. So that's a fraction. Now if I wanted um, an equivalent fraction to this one, I could look at um, the fraction below. And this fraction below still has, if you can look at it, just ignore the lines for a minute, um, half of the circle is colored and half of it is white. Um, now, pay attention again to those lines that section it off, and it, you can see that there are four parts to it, and two of those parts are colored. So that would be two out of four. Okay, and then we can go over here. We still have half of the circle colored, half of it white. Now we have three that are colored and six total. And down here, we, st we still have half colored, half white. But now we have four pieces that are colored and eight in total. <clears throat> so these are all equivalent fractions. They're equivalent to each other. So any fraction that, has, that had um, a circle and half of it colored and half of it white would be an equivalent fraction to this. Now you could find equivalent fractions by drawing pictures, but you could also, if we go down here by this star, um, you can find the equivalent fractions by uh, multiplying or dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And it could be literally any number. You decide. Um, it's unlimited, but it has to be the same multiplying or dividing the same uh, number by both the top number and the bottom number. Now I added a little graphic here to remind you of those two large words, numerator and denominator. De numerator always goes on top, denominator always goes on the bottom. And it also has the added bonus of reminding you what those things mean. So on the top you have how many parts you, you have, and on the bottom is how many parts of the whole. So if you find yourself forgetting what the fraction or how the fraction is structured, then you can turn to uh, this part to help you. Now, um, knowing that you could find any equivalent fraction by multiplying the numerator and the denominator, let's just check to make sure that that worked here. So let's go with 1 over 2. Um, is our base fraction because it's the smallest you could possibly go with this fraction. One out of two. Two parts and one shaded is the least uh, number of pieces. Now if I look at the bottom here with the blue, um, if I multiplied this fraction, both top and bottom, by two, I would get one times two is two and two times two is four. And there's that fraction, two times four or 2 over 4. Uh, same thing over here. If I multiplied this, the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3, I would get 1 times 3 is 3 and 2 times 3 is 6. So there's our equivalent fraction. And same thing down here. Uh, 1 times 4 is 4 and 2 times 4 is 8. So that's how I could find that fraction. Now, uh, if we go down to the bottom, let's do an example together. So you're going to have to copy this down. Um, but it, ha it says, this rectangle was made with four or with color tiles. What fraction of the rectangle is shaded? How many different fractions can you write to describe the... Oh, that shouldn't say green part. That will say gray part. So, um, I will flip to this program here, and 
Here's our question. So we'll do the easy one first. Oops, I'm shooting all kinds of buttons here. Um, let's count up the total number of squares and how many are shaded. So on the bottom will be how many squares total. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 boxes total and six of them are shaded. Now this looks very similar to those circles because it's half shaded, half not. So um, when I write an equivalent fraction, um, I can write an equal sign in between each to show that they're equal. So um, I want to maybe multiply this top and bottom by 2. So 6 times 2 is 12. And 12 times 2 is 24. So there is a way to write that. Um, now if we want to stay in the nature of this square, we could look at, um, well, we'd have, to, we'd have to draw extra lines just to make that work. But it would work. Okay, so let's... Let's focus on dividing then instead to keep it less confusing for us. It's taking a while. So I look at 6 over 12 and I want to make another fraction but smaller. I could think of it as um, columns. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There's four columns in total. And how many, are, how many columns are shaded? There are two. I could also do rows. There are one, two, three rows. And, oh, I couldn't do that, hey? Because it's not a full row that's shaded. So erase that. I could not do that. Maybe you caught that before I did. Uh, but there is another way to write this. Because these two halves are equal. There's 6 and 6, so I could uh, divide this fraction by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. I know this is right because 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Um, here, we'll cross that off. So I could, I could write this fraction as 6 times 12, 2 times 4, um, 1 times 2. Okay. Um, and so I've just, I've just created three different fractions, but they all mean basically the same thing, and that's this right here. Okay, now, um, if we look down here, it says, when you multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator of a fraction by the same number, you do not change the value of the fraction. So what's that, what's that saying is the value of the fraction, the picture, is still going to look the same. So in this case, um, it's going to always be half shaded and half not, no matter how many lines you draw in, in here, how many times you divide it up. It'll still be half shaded, half not. That applies for any fraction. So multiplying or dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number does not change the value of the fraction. Now, here's a practice for you to try. So um, you are going to try what I just did up there um, to do the fraction of white, the light gray, and dark gray of this. Um, don't add any extra lines. Just do uh, as many different fractions as you can for each color um, based on the squares that are here. So you can um, find the total and then divide. So pause the video now and then we'll go through it after. Okay, now that you've gone through um, and completed this question, let's see what we've got. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. 6 times 4 is 24. So 
we should have gotten for each one of these at least that the denominator it, to start with would be 24. Now for white, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 white. We have 8 gray, or light gray, I should say. And dark gray looks like we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, so there's 10. So let's start with um, A, white. Now, how many uh, different ways could we write this? Um, what we could do is we could look at it in columns like this. It's, it's, it's kind of easy to do that when you have a picture. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we can't do columns, sorry. We have to do rows. One, two, three, four. Erase those. So we have one, two, three, four columns. And how many of those columns are all white? One of those columns are all or is all white. Okay. Um, now the way this is organized might be confusing, but now that we've got this nice small equation, we can start multiplying off of it. So I could go uh, multiply both of those by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. So there's another equivalent fraction of 2 over 8, 2 eighths. Um, now we could also multiply this by 3 and by 4 um, and by 5 and you could continue. And what that would look like then would be here are some other fractions that you could have. So if I multiplied by 3, I would have 3 over 12. If I multiplied by 4, I would have 4 over 16. And if I multiplied by 5, I would have 5 over 20. Now this doesn't necessarily match the squares that you have. It matches our math though. Um, but the ones that would match the squares would be these ones. Um, and should be here, this one. Okay. Um, Now with light gray, light gray is a little tricky. We, we can't really just divide the picture up, so we'll have to do it mathematically. So if I divided both of these by 2, I could get 8 divided by 2 is 4, 24 divided by 2 is 12. I could do that again, uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6. And I could even do that one more time. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So there's a, a whole bunch of fractions, and all I did was half each one each time. Okay? And with the dark gray, we've got um, 10 over 24. So I'm going to do the divide by 2 method again. So I'm going to divide 10 and 24. So that's 5 and 12. Now, you'll notice that I can't divide this by 2 again because 5 doesn't divide by 2 evenly. So um, this is going to be all that I can do for my equivalent fractions for the dark gray. Okay, this might be um, have a little more fractions, especially in A, than you may have had. But if you had at least 3... Um, in that one, and if you had these ones for there and dark gray, you may have had, even had another one that I'm not thinking of right now. But hopefully you understand the concept of equivalent fractions from this. Now one question, in, or I guess a couple questions in your textbook assignment, um, say something similar, similar to this. Draw a picture to show the following pair of equivalent fractions. So these two fractions are equivalent, and I know because if I multiply 2 and 5 by 3, I will get 6 over 15. Because 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 3 is 15. 
Now, if I wanted to draw a picture to show this, um, I might draw, let's see, I want to draw five. Five is kind of tough, but I'll do a circle. And I want to try to make these as even as I can, which is not working out so well. Uh, that's okay if you're not an artist. But, okay, so there's five. There's five. Oops. <clears throat> Imagine those are equivalent. And so this says that two need to be. Oh, whoops. I wanted that to be, I think. Okay, so imagine that those, this is e equal. Now, to draw the equivalent fraction, then I would, uh, again, draw the same circle, and then I would try to, oops, draw this similar to, I did the, to what I did the last time. And then, but I, instead of 5, I need 15. So that means I need to add extra lines. So let's count if we have 15. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And how many do I need to shade in? I need to shade in 6. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, maybe we should do that on the top there so that it looks the same. So we can, whoops. So we can shade in those six lines and you can see that they're, sh they're shaded in um, in the same spot. So that's how I would do that one. Okay, so sorry about the longer lesson today, but um, we are now finished, so your assignment is page 168 to 169, numbers 1, 2, and uh, 6 to 9.